Just taking a tip from uh, Network Chuck there and having a mouthful of coffee before starting talking. Um, hi, my name's Gareth from QC Tech, and today we're going to be looking at doing a bit of playing with this little guy here, uh, which is an INA 3221 board. Uh, and we're going to be setting this up to do some current monitoring on some kit. Before we get into that though, we'll do a quick word from our sponsor, which is still just me but in a different shirt. Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch this video. Quietly Confident Technology Limited is a managed services provider and IT consultancy based in Staffordshire in the United Kingdom. We work with companies large and small to make the most of their IT and help drive businesses forward using technology. If you'd like to talk to us about any of the subjects we talk about on the YouTube channel, or if you'd just like to talk to us about how we can help your company, head to our website at www.qctech.co.uk where you'll find a contact us form with details of how to get in touch. Now back to the content, thanks. Hi, uh, welcome back. So the background to what I'm actually doing here. Um, in a previous video, which I'll link to, um, I showed you this, which is, it was a unified switch that came in from a customer, it was broken, took it apart, worked out the power supply was broken, so I've replaced the, uh, the factory power supply with that, which is a 12 to 48 volt DC adapter, uh, power, uh, transformer, um, and fitted a additional power socket on the back of the unit there. Um, the idea is that this can now run from a 12 volt car battery, something like this one that I have sitting here um, and that will be loads better for us to use when we're doing the the, outs, uh, the outdoor events that we do. One of the considerations for when we're doing anything that's solar powered is how much power it's actually using. Um, so what I've got here, as I said a few seconds ago, and I have to keep reading this off because I can't remember it, it's an INA 3221. So this um, has you can connect three different loads up to this uh, and it will sense the amount of current that's been drawn using some clever electronics and maths um, and a resistor. So each of these has got a little resistor attached to it. Um, this then has an I2C um, interface on it. So this will talk quite nicely to um, Arduinos, Raspberry Pis, that sort of stuff. So once I've got this soldered up um, and some connectors on it, uh, I'm then going to plug this into a Raspberry Pi, um, get it all configured on the Pi, make sure it can sense stuff, um, and then we're going to connect the switch across this, see how much power it's actually drawing, and then give it a bit of a load test. So, you know, put some, uh, put some access points on it, uh, maybe some CCTV, see what draws the most load, um, and see what we can actually max that out at. In theory, it's 150 watts. So 150 watts, and um, I'll just switch over to this. 150 watts at 12 volts is 12 and a half amps. Um, I'm fairly sure it's not gonna get anywhere near to that. Um, if, if you watch the previous video that I, that I did, I mean, literally only a few minutes ago, um, yeah, you'll see that at 48, it's 3.125 amps, um, but at 12 volts, uh, at 240, which is what we were nominally here in the UK, it's one, it's 0.625 amps. Words seem to be failing me. Um, so yeah, I have done some testing with something similar to this previously. Um, it wasn't particularly conclusive. I didn't do very, very good testing. I didn't do it particularly scientifically. Uh, but I think we're probably going to find somewhere between 10% and 50% of this full 12 and a half amps. Um, I'm going to be surprised if we get to six. Really surprised. Um, just out of interest, very quickly for anyone that's wondering if my computer's going to work, the uh, the DC power connector that I'm using on the back of the switch there is this, which is a 10 amp um, DC to DC connector. You will notice it's 10 amp. Technically, we might draw 12 and a half but I'm not concerned, and it will be fused anyway. Um, and then the DC to DC boost converter, which is uh, what we've got inside that case, is this one here that came from Amazon. This one's not currently available, but I'm sure if you uh, 
search 12 to 24 uh, to, sorry 12 to 48 volt boost you will find various different current ratings and um, and things so um, yeah and the sensor that we're using is this one here the INA 3221 I2C sensor for monitoring voltage three channels and it's a replacement for an INA 219 uh, I think it's the 219 that I've used previously but I can't quite remember um, it says the voltage, it, it's voltage and current, so it, it does do current as well. So, I'm going to get the soldering iron out, get that warmed up, get it tinned, switch to the overhead view, and then we'll just get this soldered up and we'll uh, start that process and see how we get on. Okay, I've got everything, uh, everything warmed up now, I think. Um, so I'm going to switch back to the, uh, to the overhead. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get all of these prepped up. Um, I've just done a bit of reading up um, and it looks like I'm going to need a 5 volts in and a ground and then put these into pairs. A load 1, load 2 and load 3 positive and negative. So the first job is going to be just to strip all of these. I'm going to be using this, this really impressive tool here um, because I don't actually appear to have the correct toolbox with me. So I'm having one slightly longer end, slightly shorter end. So the shorter end is going to be going to the PCB. Oh yeah, the longer end. So I'm going to use these connectors. Um, which so when they're made up look like this get that actually central so they are they're like an Anderson connector if you use the Anderson connectors they're just a smaller version um, and these I believe are good for 10 amps I need to double check that um, yeah so they make a nice good positive connection um, yeah, so I've tried to do this previously with XT30s. Um, they're just too small and fiddly. I'm not good enough at soldering to actually get these to solder particularly well. Um, whereas these are just a crimp down connector. So um, I was going to do all of this project with uh, the XT30s, but I've decided against that because I spent three hours, did lots of swearing, didn't really get anywhere. Okay, um, that's all of those stripped. Um, I've had a couple of just false starts with uh, trying to terminate these. The, this first one that I did seems to have gone on okay, but I think I was using the wrong jaws. So I've just swapped the jaws over, um, and I'm hoping that I'm now on the correct jaws in my crimping tool for these crimps. Felt a lot better crimping. Looks pretty good there. Much happier with that. Okay, so there we have all of our connectors wired. Next thing is to get some positive and negative ends on. Now with these connectors, you have to make sure you've got them the right way round. So there's a, get this so the camera can see it maybe. Just about see there, there's a little, metal strip in there 
Um, and these have got a slight hook to them. So the hook needs to go over the metal and lock into place. You also obviously need to use the black cable on the black blocks. Sometimes they just push in nicely like that. Sometimes you have to get a screwdriver behind them and give them a bit of a wiggle. Okay, so I was fairly lucky there. There was only one really that needed any pushing in and I just used the uh, the end of a file on my Swiss to do that. And we've got these little boots that go over so we'll just nick the end off these and then these guys slide together now what you do have to make sure is that you're sliding them together in the same orientation as whatever you're going to be feeding them from slide the boot down the cable first one done and i'm not sure if there's actually a standard for the way these should be orientated or not if anybody watching happens to know, please feel free to uh, put something in the comments.
Okay, I'm just going to trim all of these down to the same length because uh, I always didn't do a brilliant job of that earlier. So I will then need to strip some, strip some more off. Alrighty. Clear all those bits out of the way. So, on to soldering. So I've got my iron set at about 300. Um, it's not a particularly accurate iron, this one. Should be close. So we're going through and just tinning all of these tips before we try and do anything with them. Okay, just trying to get this in some sort of orientation where the camera can see what's going on still, and I can still solder. Um, so I'm gonna go for the ground and then channel 3 first ground and channel 2 name and finally on the uh, sensing sides the ground and channel 1 and I want to insert the ground and PWR. And there's a VPU there as well. I'm not entirely sure what the VPU is. I need to look that up. I think this tip might have been a bit small for this job as well. Because it's taking a very long time to heat up. I may have just realised that I've done a silly thing. I found this case on... Uh, Thingiverse, and I 3D printed this case for the uh, for the board. Um, so that's gonna be okay. Um, that's not gonna fit through that hole. There is a gap down at the front here, so hopefully. It'll all 
fit out that way okay. Yep, so there we are with it uh, in the case with the power in and one, two and three senses in the nice little case from Thingiverse. Does all kind of fit. Oh, there's an opening on the side here. Should definitely have that coming out the side. Perfect. So I guess the thing to do now is to uh, find the Raspberry Pi, get this thing powered on and start looking at a bit of output. Thanks for watching the video all the way through. Um, if you enjoyed what you've just watched, then I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a like. Um, it's really going to help me as a new YouTube creator to, uh, to get YouTube to realise that my videos are half decent. Hopefully they are. Um, if you uh, like what I'm doing generally, it'd be great if you could subscribe to my channel. Again, just helps, helps with the uh, YouTube mojo. Um, and if you have any comments or constructive feedback, please feel free to put that in the comments section below and I will do my very best to get through and, uh, and look at those. Um, if you have, for example, comments on um, the audio quality or the way the camera work's done, that's fine. Um, or comments on my crimping abilities or soldering skills, constructive feedback is the way forward. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.